Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Hey, I am Jeff Ramsey. Gus Sarola. Joel Heyman. I'm Jenny McCarthy. Felicity Huffman. I'm Olivia Munn. I would totally do Bernie this week. Yeah. I would do myself. Waveforms are all over the place. I'm very wary of big goods in the mail. It's, you know, it's a good thing those sheep didn't, like, scream every time they hit the water. This is Bernie Burns. I'm not going to be naked in movies anymore. If there is a god, I'm sure he approves. It might be the most uncomfortable thing I've ever experienced. No one's trying to steal their cloud song. We're all friends. <laughs> hey, everyone. Welcome to the Drunk Tank. The Rooster Teeth Podcast. Videos, video games, movies and stuff, too. Is it over? <laughs> well, thanks for sticking with us through our longest <laughs> intro ever. No kidding. Thanks, Kimosabi with two A's. Keith. Keith Mosabi? Keith Lewis. Keith. Oh. I feel like we're starting the second drunk tank of the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What's that- up, guys? How's everyone doing? Hey, everybody. Hey, I'm doing good. I'm doing well. Speaking of uh, drunk tanks, this, I haven't used a segue in a while, Jeff, or Bernie. Uh, hey, Jack, I was telling these guys before you got in this morning uh-huh. that I was listening to a local like morning show on the radio as I was driving in. Morning <laughs> Zoo. And they were saying, I guess, that the Austin Police Department is doing like field sobriety training for its cadets this Friday. So they're taking volunteers, and you can go out there to the school where all the cadets train. And APD will give you all the booze you can drink between 4.30 p.m. and 11 p.m. No. Yeah. yeah. Is that true? Like they, yeah. They're going to have a margarita machine, <laughs> rain alcohol, mixers, and then they're going to monitor you and give you field sobriety tests Dude, every so often. Company trip, man. Dude, so <laughs> but, the but, reason but, Gus is bringing it up is we have to have a chaperone, and <laughs> Gus and I have nominated you to be our chaperone. Well, because I've already been through the field sobriety <laughs> Yeah. Test. You already know how not to do it. <laughs> And uh, the, the the big catch is you have to show up on an empty stomach. Oh, man. I can, I, I can do that. I, I'm still looking for a link or trying what? to find more information. I haven't found any corroborating information. This is this Thursday? Yet. It's Friday. This Friday. Friday. Dude, let's do that. That's gotta, it's going to be the most, appli- <laughs> <laughs> most applications APD has received for anything ever. <laughs> so I'll see if I can find some information. Hopefully, we can we can read up a little more on it and see you, if we can go out there. You think that giant line in front of the arch is going to be just moved over uh-huh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> from the cadet center? I think I think their uh, their training facility is down by the airport, like oh, off of okay. Burleson somewhere. All right, that's a long walk. Let's get drunk and steal a plane. <laughs> Let's get drunk and go to California. That's the start of <laughs> National Treasure Three, right? Yeah. Get drunk and steal a plane and steal the Declaration of Independence. Well, you know, some people are belligerent drunks, so there's a good chance that they could get all these drunk people together, and then they have to arrest people who came <laughs> out to their thing, right? Yeah, is, is it just I, I this thing? That might be part of the the whole like having a chaperone issue. Is like they they need someone you know to help calm you down if you get fucked up. Oh, uh, dude, are we allowed to film this? I mean, would it be entrapment if you know you go out there and they <laughs> like you booze? Your Honor, the cops got me drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. Well, that's why I have to film it, right? <laughs> they do, they used to do that for uh, warrants where they would send people tickets to some kind of prize thing, and then they would show up and they just arrest everybody. Yeah, this feels kind of like the same thing. I don't know why. <laughs> I uh, I don't know why you guys are getting all excited about getting drunk. I think that's immature. I just want to help the community. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way to take the high road. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So I think uh, Jack is, is qualified, the most qualified to be our chaperone. I okay. think so too. You're welcome. Because because well, I have the biggest vehicle, <laughs> I can that drive all you drunk assholes. <laughs> You know, what, is, what is the chance you're going to have a field full of drunk people and somebody's not going to lip off to the cops? <laughs> I mean, what's the likelihood of that? Well, what? well, around here, they you know they taser grandmas, so you better that's be careful. What's the likelihood that it'll come out of this office? <laughs> <laughs> so that's our project for Friday. We have to go get drunk with the police and, oh, dude, and get, ho- someone has I, to get tased. I, I hope to God we can help the city of Austin. I'm out. so down with that. That sounds like fun. I really, I mean, I really want to give back. It'll be the first scientific experiment in history that actually has a margarita machine involved. <laughs> Man, so last week we didn't have many topics to talk about, but this week we got tons of topics. Like what? We've got the Conan O'Brien thing. Who's that? a big commitment. We've got, we got the Mark McGuire thing. Uh-oh. Fucking A. That was disappointing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not, not surprising, though. We've no. got Avatar still. Oh, you know what? Still. I was surprised by that. I was. Really? That, yeah, that, I don't know why. That, that, I thought Mark McGuire... Mark McGuire went from looking like a human to being a, a walking was, muscle. I knew he in took Mag- creatine and in all McGuire's that. In McGuire's defense, he was always a huge motherfucker. I don't know, man. I have his rookie card. I, I his have, 87 I, tops rookie card. I, I, and the guy 
the guy looked like Bernie and Jack uh, I had together. That, I had that rookie card, too. He was not that muscular back then. His, yeah. his rookie card is an 8x11 sheet, so <laughs> they couldn't fit him on the small ones. They, they photoshopped a face onto his he, biceps. He comes from a big family, too. you got to remember his brother, Dan McGuire, who played in the NFL, was 6'8", and he weighed like 300 pounds. Actually, I don't have to remember that. Yeah, you do. So he, you did, he, he played for the Bengals, I think. He, he really had a brother in the NFL? Dan McGuire. Yeah, I, he played for about, he quarterbacked for about two years. I did he was not kind know of that. like the He was kind of like the beefy white version of Vince Young. Where he was like four f- inches taller than anybody else in the field. Wow. Bengals got yeah. knocked out of the playoffs. Pa- Patriots sad. got knocked out of the playoffs. I'm well, assuming. I didn't actually see yeah, the final score. No, the, the Patriots lost uh, Wes Welker the week before to the Texans, and that hurt him quite a bit. And the Bengals, though, they, just, they weren't ready for that game, I guess. It was a home game, and the Jets just crushed them. Yep. Which was sad, because I like the Bengals. I, I, like, I like watching Ocho Cinco. That guy's he looks like he's having a fun time playing football. <laughs> you know he's changing his name again? Is it the Jeff? Because when he has a bad game, I guess people call him Ocho Stinko, and he doesn't like it. <laughs> so what's he changed his name to? The Japanese equivalent he, of Ocho Stinko? He's changing it to Hachigo, right? Or Hachigo, Something however you say like it. That. That's great, man. That's fucking awesome. And just so we, we should be clear, Chad, uh, Chad Johnson. Chad right? Johnson is a guy who plays for the Bengals. He's a receiver, uh, number 85. 85. And, and so he wanted to put on his jersey Ocho Cinco, and the NFL wouldn't let him. So he legally changed his last name to Ocho Cinco. Which is a brilliant move because yeah. it's all anybody's talking about. Yeah. But also, I think it's, it's – it's, I'm going to go back to high school Spanish here, Gus, and you can help me out. Totally incorrect. Why wouldn't it be like Ocho Cinco? It's 8-5. I guess so. 8-5. Yeah. 85. 85. Sure. But that's like, all you need. Ch- uh, Ocho Cinco is basically the James Franco of, the f- of football. <laughs> like he's having a great time doing what he does, and he knows he's you know being an idiot, but he's having a good time doing it. I like how you approve of him changing his name, Jeff. You being the person, the only person I know who's ever changed their name is like, yes, everyone should. You know, have, know, everyone dude. should have a ridiculous name. I think so. <laughs> Fuck it, why not? Life's o- too short to be serious. Chad Ocho Cinco will be changing his name to <laughs> Chad Hachigo, <laughs> which translates to eight and five in Japanese. <laughs> So, he's he just be... changed his name every season. Hot to go. That's a lot of paperwork to change your name. It's not. It's really not. But you, have to, oh. you, have to, you have to go in front of a judge or something. Wait, don't I you? forgot. No, yeah, the three years after the aftermath was pretty rough for me. <laughs> so this guy yeah. trying to get a new driver's license, changed his name, and then he's changing it again. I mean that that's that's, that's got to be a huge backlog of paperwork. Like there's probably some still some stuff that hasn't changed to Ocho Cinco. You could, be, but in in Ocho Cinco's defense, you could walk down to the courtroom right now and in two hours walk out with a new name. Is yeah, that that's, that's not the hard part. That's the hard not part the hard part. Is right. changing everything else. I sit yeah. next to Jeff in the office, and for the last three years, after he changed his name to Jeffrey Laser Ramsey, Laser with a Z. Yes. Uh, you, I mean, you've been through hell because yeah. it just keeps cropping up. Didn't you lose insurance on your car for six months? Because no, of I lost card? homeowners insurance for thirteen months because of a clerical. Oh <laughs> my god! Isn't one of your company credit cards still say? Doesn't it still they have your last name? They will not let me change the name to Ramsey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I offered to send the court documentation to them, a copy of it, and they, they said no. So they'd rather, city, city card. <laughs> they'd yeah. rather have a, a card floating out there with the wrong name than to like accept documentation showing that you I find if name. you just put your thumb over that part of the card, nobody ever notices. Or cares. <laughs> no one even asked for your ID, right? No, not really. Yeah, I think like according to credit card rules, they don't, you, they don't, you don't have to have an ID to use a credit card. Is I thought, that if, you, I thought yeah. if you didn't sign the back of a card, they're supposed to ask for ID. No, that's not true. Really? Yep. You can write on the back of the card, please check ID. I one time, I don't <laughs> remember the scenario. That's a weird name. <laughs> I don't remember the scenario, but, oh, I know. The other day, Bernie and I went to Avatar, and he went to go park, and he gave me his credit, gave me his wallet and asked me to pick up the tickets at Will Call, and I gave the lady Bernie's driver's license and Bernie's credit card, and she looked at the driver's license and looked at me and looked at the driver's license and said, thank you, Mr. Burns. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Was we look just alike? Yeah, you all you all, y'all are very similar. I always heard too there was a weird law that if you tried to use a fake ID to get alcohol, that then the onus was on you, that it absolved the bar or the building of any kind. Of, I don't think that's true. I'm willing to bet Is that's that true? not true, especially in Texas. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So alcohol but, laws in Texas are ludicrous. Well, we're we're a Baptist state. When I first moved to Texas, there was nothing open on Sunday at all. Yeah. All the malls were closed on Sunday. And I think the only thing open was grocery stores. So that's the whole fucking Bible Belt, man. I, what, I grew up with that. And is it that way in other 
states as well where you can't buy alcohol on Sunday? No, I think in California you can buy alcohol whenever. You can buy, you can buy alcohol, alcohol 24 hours yeah. a day. Okay. And you can buy it anywhere. Not in California. The Girl Scouts sell alcohol in California. <laughs> what, 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 not, not, not 24 hours a day, I don't think. Yeah, California. dude. I've walked, into, I've walked into liquor stores with Joel and Kathleen at like 4 in the morning. Like a grocery store at like 3 in the morning th- on a Tuesday I, and bought like vodka. That's a sad story right I there. I think you can <laughs> buy up to 4 a.m. I think that's their, their break time. So the cutoff is 4 a.m. to 4 30 like, or? like four well I four a.m. till the dawn yeah. <laughs> till, till the sun comes up I, I don't know i don't know exactly but i'm pretty sure you there is a, a time where you can no longer buy alcohol in california i think in louisiana they actually spike bottled water with vodka <laughs> when i when i lived in new jersey the liquor store by my house closed at 7 30 at p.m yeah also PM. at new jersey you can't buy beer at convenience stores right you can't buy beer at gas stations yeah you don't I, the gas stations are different in Jersey because you don't pump your own gas, so nobody goes in gas stations. It's like a, a place where you just go have somebody pump your gas and you leave. Yeah, you I went like to Jer- want to get beef jerky. I went to Jersey once a couple of years ago, and I was trying okay. to buy some beer at a gas station. I was like, and I walked in, I was like, "Where's the beer?" And they're like, "Oh, you got to go to the store across the street." In in the uh, they still have full service gas stations. They're yeah, all full service. Yeah, you're right? not allowed. It's illegal to pump your own gas. You get you knock the fuck out trying to get out of your car and pump your gas in Jersey. Why? It's a union thing. I guess so. It'd probably probably uh, probably illegal, and then uh, the uh, gas station. Incur some sort Somebody, of isn't there, wow, isn't, I can't imagine. Isn't that. there another state like that? There's a couple. It's yeah, not just I Jersey. think there's there's two states. It's Jersey and one other one. Also in Oregon, they can't sell at least where Griffin grew up. They don't sell beer and wine and liquor in the same place. So like, if you want to buy liquor, you got to go to the liquor store, and if you want to buy beer and wine, you go to the beer and wine store. M- remember when we went to Utah for Sundance and we had to buy liquor from the state? Yep. Oh well, yeah. I think Washington State's also like that. I think all the liquor stores in Washington State are state run. But the the weird thing in Utah is you have to sign up for a membership to the bar in order to drink there. You know, yeah. I think that might be the same way in Alabama. They have the ABC, the Alabama Beverage Commission, and that's where you go to get liquor. They, I, I, I like, like that you have to it. buy alcohol from these states, whereas Texas, they're just getting you drunk for free. <laughs> <laughs> what, <laughs> when I was in Alabama for Christmas, I... Uh, I tried to sneak out and buy a bottle of wine for Griffin and I after my parents went to bed because being at home and 34 at my house is like being 12 again for some reason. And uh, I went to the gas station and I couldn't find the wine in the gas station. And I went to the guy and I said, um, do you guys have any wine? I, I, all, I, all I see is beer. And the guy looks at me and goes, why would we have wine? <laughs> and I was like, well, I don't. And he's like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, I don't. And he's like, we got beer. And I was like, I'll, I'll tell uh, <laughs> <laughs> Could I get, what, what, okay. Did he and slap you went, across the And there was like <laughs> Miller. No there was Miller, Bud, Bud Light, and uh, Natural Light. And that was it. I, they, what a great selection. They didn't even have Heineken. They had Corona. That was like as exotic as it Ooh. could. Well, you can walk down the street and miss. To buy your wine. <laughs> we uh, when I went to to Amsterdam, you know, I went with uh, with Jason a couple of years ago, and we were sitting at a at a bar, and uh, there was a cute bartender who was working there. I think his name was Ralph. Serge. Yeah. No, 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 she was real cute, and uh, I think like Jason was trying to like like chat her up and talk to her, and then after a while, he's like, you know, we we need another round of drinks, and she asked what we wanted. And Jason was like, what what's your favorite beer? She's like, they're all good, and he's like, no, no, if you can only have one beer the rest of your life, you know, what is it? She goes, it's, it's expensive, but it's this. And she pulled out a Corona, <laughs> and Jason's like, "I'll take that." And it was like it was like a, it was like a ten dollar Corona, dude. I nice. I used to go when I lived in Jersey. I used to go to the steak restaurant because they served Lone Star. Lone Star because it was imported <laughs> was five dollars a bottle oh, in New Jersey, man. In Eaton Town, that's New more than a six pack, right? Yeah, oh, it's more than a, for Lone Star. It's more than a case. That's true. So, hey, uh, last week was the uh, UT Championship game, right? I was kind of curious how long the alcohol talk was going to last. <laughs> I, go I was just going to sit here and watch you guys, like, wax nostalgic about beers you've drank <laughs> in your life. I almost brought up the, the, the old lady that got us drunk in, uh, Shit. in Breda, Netherlands. <laughs> God, that, was, that, was, that lady is the devil. That wait, was, wait, wait, what is this? What is this? She is, we talked about her before. The old-ass lady who owned a bar in Breda. And uh, her and her daughter ran it, and she was she was from the Netherlands, but her daughter had an Irish accent for some reason. It was really weird. And uh, we sat down there. We were waiting to eat at a Mexican, at the worst Mexican restaurant on the planet. And uh, yeah, they put like they, ketchup they, on corn tortillas. Like, <laughs> they called were, it they were chickpeas in my burrito. <laughs> it was really bizarre. But uh, and so we didn't know what to order. We were she was kind of friendly, so she was like, "Don't you don't order anything? I'll just bring stuff to you." And then she would come and she'd be like. And everything had a different glass, like a special glass, every beer. Yeah. And she'd be like, this one's the headache. And we'd be like, uh. And she'd be like, this one's the, the double headache. And I <laughs> felt so fucking bad the next day. It was pretty bad. I wanted to, I wanted to run that lady down. I, 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 I wanted... vaguely remember her saying number 10. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was like a number 10 and a number 13. Yeah. She By the end, we were like drinking out of these ceramic goblets or something. <laughs> I don't know what they were. So I, want, awesome. I want to clarify, Jeff. It, was this place worse 
or better, this, this Mexican food, was it worse or better than Taco Bill in Melbourne, <laughs> Australia? <laughs> Taco Bill. Taco <laughs> Bill, I think, is the worst Mexican food I've it ever had. It was worse. Really? Dude, Best it name. was like, the ingredients were just bizarre. It was, I, I can't even explain to you. It was like nothing you've ever had before. So weird. It was I, so gross. I would say that Mexican food, of all the cuisines, is the most inconsistent based on where you're eating it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go well, with that. I, a, I can see that. There's only like three ingredients in Mexican food, so if you mess up any nope. any one of those ingredients, you're going to ruin it. That's not true. You, I mean, if you ask anyone from different parts of the world, what are the three ingredients in Mexican food? If you ask somebody from California, they would say fish, fish avocado, and rice, probably. And in Texas, we would say... Beef, fried beans. Beef, cheese, and more cheese. <laughs> <laughs> or jalapenos. And jalapenos, Be- right. Beef, you know, melted we, cheese, and cheese sauce. We've had some pretty pizzas like that, too, though. I remember the first meal you and I had in, in uh, Edinburgh, we went to a pizza place, and that was like, the pizza combinations they had were just bizarre. It was like it was like uh, there was like cuttlefish pizza and just like Gross. really weird shit. Gross. I was like, I just want pepperoni. And they were like, I don't, what? I think the closest we got was salami. Yeah, they had a, that was, you're right, that was, they had a salami pizza that was as close as you could get to pepperoni. Not the same thing. You know, I never... No, no, <laughs> not the same thing. As a kid, salami always grossed me out because in Howard the Duck, Howard the Duck cuts off the tentacles from that monster and he says it's sliced salami. Yeah. <laughs> so when I was a little kid in my head, sliced salami was always like gross alien tentacles. <laughs> wow. As so, a kid, I, I liked salami, but occasionally you would get this horrible like black pepper nugget in a piece of salami. I'm talking like Oscar Mayer stuff. It, and it was the worst experience of my life whenever I got that. Well, I, it was I like, like those nuggets. It's like peppercorn or something, right? It, yeah. I don't know what it is, but it man, is. that would be like getting punched in the face by a pepper mill or something. <laughs> oh, man. So should we talk the UT Alabama game now? Are you done with booze? No. We can Gus go. and I go all I, I could go. I could, I've got a story about booze. We could talk. We're going to do that. No, let's, talk, let's talk about the football game. So, this, is, this is police work. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we had the game at the Alamo Draft House last Thursday. It turned out to be a really good game. Um, it basically it turned out about as good as it could for you, Jeff. Right, because the Texas yeah, fans—I didn't, didn't get punched out or anything. The Texas fans were disappointed, but at the same time, we lost our starting quarterback on the fifth offensive play of the game for us, dude. When Colt McCoy went down, I got really nervous yeah. for about forty-five seconds. You should have been, yeah. No, you should have been more nervous than that. You should have been nervous for the first half. It was that was scary. Well, if you would have told me, if you would have come up to me and said, "Okay, uh, your starting quarterback, Colt McCoy, who is the Heisman nominated you know quarterback, is going to go down on your first drive." I'd been like, oh, we're going to lose by 90 points. And no, you guys did pretty well. We did really good, actually. A, a lot of that, is, I think, is that we gave Mark Ingram the entire third quarter off. <laughs> I, don't, I was more afraid of that other running back than Mark Ingram. That, that freshman Richardson? Kid? Yeah. True freshman. Wow. Really. Yeah, that kid was awesome. They had almost identical numbers. They both had about, a, I think, Ingram had 114 yards, and he, uh, Richardson had 112, and they both had two touchdowns. Yeah. Well, how many yards did? Or what was the biggest play that Ingram broke? Like maybe like twenty-two I don't know, yards, 20, 20, 30 yards. He didn't have any huge plays like yeah. that. That, one that Richardson can had like that forty-five yard touchdown. Yeah, Ingram had a a score from two yards out that he would have scored from ninety-eight yards out. I mean, it was a hole that was just ridiculous. We wouldn't have the same defense. In yeah, that, yeah. It was. Uh, yeah. How, however, that well, because they, they put in that truck in front of him to go through the line. <laughs> and everyone was scared. Guy, I don't know what that guy was. I mean, he was like. It's like they shaved a rhino or something and <laughs> put him in Alabama. That guy was enormous. I was going to say, they, re- they did some recruiting in Antarctica and picked up a walrus. <laughs> so, yeah, he looked like a walrus. Yeah, that guy was, that guy was massive. We, we had that other guy in the defense who was like number 54, the guy that picked up the fumble. And, uh, what, oh, was yeah. your, what was your backup quarterback's Garrett name? Garrett Gilbert. Gilbert? Yeah. The, one that, GG. the, the guy GG. that Gilbert tried to tackle? <laughs> it was very, very yeah. funny. Well, quarterbacks don't do a lot of tackling in practice, so Still, I won't hold that against them. He, he threw Gilbert in the stands. <laughs> well, no, Gilbert just sort of like He's fell like, off. Of him. But anyway, he, here's what I don't get: I don't get why people keep complaining that Texas would have done much better if they had Colt McCoy, right? Sure, we had Colt McCoy. It's not like Colt McCoy was not in that game. He was in that game and he was knocked out. That's part of football. Mm-hmm. That's what happens. You can't say that Texas didn't have Colt McCoy. They did have Colt McCoy. Like if Colt was on probation or something or got a DUI the night before and couldn't play, that would be a little different. But. Yeah, or whatever. But you know? yeah, injuries are a part of football. Yeah. You know what else is part of football? Having a backup quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, depth charts. Well, yeah, yeah. That's what I was saying. The, you know, the person who probably got hurt most out of, out of Colt going down was Colt's brother who's coming in as a quarterback. 
because Garrett Gilbert looked pretty damn good for a, a 19-year-old true freshman playing his first real minutes in the national championship game. Yeah. Like, he looked pretty solid. And his, he was kind of nervous at first. I mean, yeah. He well, a few missteps, but he, 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 he got it together. They didn't really let him play until about, I, w- I would say, really the second half. Like, the whole the end of the first quarter and then the most of the second quarter was all handoffs. And he looked mm-hmm. nervous. But then when they finally, like, when he, cool, he cooled off and was actually throwing passes, he looked pretty solid. The fact that he didn't die... Just like just <laughs> instantly die after that sack yeah. in the fourth quarter. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that was fucking well. He brutal. had what he had two interceptions and then one fumble. But the two interceptions were both deflected. Like the one was the the, the shuttle pass at the end of the first half, mm-hmm. which was kind of crap. I I I'm more. I don't know if I blame Greg Davis for that or if I blame the running back for not catching that ball. He kind of looked like take the ball, just take it. Take <laughs> yeah. it. Greg Davis is the offensive coordinator for Texas, by the way. Uh, we, there, we've had our ups and downs. There, Greg there Davis. was a uh, did, and didn't. After one attempted pass, Garrett Gilbert like walked off the field, like kind of nursing his shoulder. Oh god! Yeah, that, yeah. Like, oh my god! No, that, Who, who's their Who's their backup? Backup? No, that was great because he walked off the field nursing his shoulder, and I was like, "Well, Colts down, Garrett's down." And then the, literally the next cut was a shot of Vince Young on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, "Oh, he's got a year of eligibility left." Yeah, he's got one year left. Put him in a suit. I'll say this: every single person in that theater was extremely awesome, in a great mood, and was really gracious, with the exception of Dan Godlin. <laughs> really? He How's was, that? He. He was just bitter and angry and kept sending me pissed off texts the whole time. <laughs> what about Joel? Joel, Joel was just Joel was drunk. drunk and obnoxious. Yeah, he, he was being pretty funny. He was just droll. No, he was Fun, not being he funny. He wasn't being funny. <laughs> no, well, no, there's nothing he funny was being, there. He was being drunk and obnoxious. <laughs> the weird thing about Joel, he was drunk after... That dude goes from zero to hammered in one drink. He was drunk before the game started. Pretty much, Like, yeah. he was heckling commercials. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird. He's like, he's like a groundhog. I think he saw a shadow and started heckling it too. <laughs> but, but it was really. I would want. I want to watch every every sports game for the rest of my life in a movie theater. Oh, that was great. So, so okay, cool. something in uh, UTOU game next season definitely. Well, I mean, well, I should say depending on how well the the teams look. No, I wouldn't think we'd be able to rent out the Alamo for Texas OU. Because Saturday, because it'll be a Saturday game. Mm. And, um, well, if it, if well the Texas OU game is usually an earlier game though. And so that's off hours, so I wouldn't be shocked. It's the weekend, though. And you know what? If we're willing to pay for it, I'm willing to bet they'd let it <laughs> let it let it go. I don't know. They might be contractually obligated for movies that they have in the theater there. Hey, yeah. gotta go, I got to go jump on a conference call. I'll be right back. All, All right. right. See Bye, you guys. soon, sweetie. You want to do it while you're on the podcast? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So uh, while, while we're on the discussion of college football, we should talk uh, some coaching changes going on. So what do you, what do you think about uh, Pete Carroll leaving USC? I don't care. <laughs> well, I mean, Pete, right, Carroll's so, a, Pete Carroll's a great coach, you know, if he could keep his players straight. I'm going to go get on the conference call with Gus. So. <laughs> well, me and Bernie will talk about football. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So who's this coach, though, that they picked up? I'm not familiar with him, but everybody seems to think he's just a jackass. So Lane Kiffin, he was uh, he actually coached, or he was a offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator at USC while uh, Carroll was there. Then he left to go to the Raiders, actually. I don't know, if, I don't know what he did there. I don't know if he was the head coach or what, but... He was with the Raiders and then left the Raiders after having a horrible season there. Went to Tennessee, coached last year at Tennessee, brought them to, I want to say, 7-6 and six, maybe? or 13-game s- season? Is that wrong? Probably. Maybe 8-6 and six or 8-7. I don't Unless know. He what was it, fired mid-season. It, it was just over just over 500 is what his final record was. What's his dude's name? Uh, Layden Kiffin. Okay. And uh, now USC has picked him up. So now Tennessee is in a lurch because they've got, what, three weeks till signing day and they don't have a head coach. So, thank you, Tennessee, or whatever. Current cool. head coach at the University of uh, Southern California Trojans. He was previously the head of the Tennessee Volunteers uh, football team, the Oakland Raiders of the NFL, and the offensive coordinator for the Trojans. So, that's exactly right. He's a 1993 graduate of Bloomington Jefferson High School in Minnesota. He graduated in 1993? He's, he was born in 1975. He's 34-year-old coach of He's the, the USC. He's the exact same wow. age as me. His annual salary is $2 million. Fuck him. Yeah, what the hell? Max making $5 million a year now? I yeah, think? but Max's not 34. That's Mac true. wasn't. Mac didn't graduate the same year I did. I would yeah. think, damn it, Pete Carroll would make it. I mean, he's coaching USC. High expectations, but... Yeah. This, so I, I get the feeling that, that USC is headed very quickly into Notre Dame territory, where they're going to be adjusting their coaches over and over again for the next couple of years yeah. to find somebody who's Pete Carroll. But Kiffin is bringing back quite a few of the old uh, USC like offensive guys and defensive guys. He's bringing back a lot of sort of – he's bringing the band back together, basically. And uh, they're, they're saying he could do pretty well with that. You know what else they call that? What's that? They also call that trying to catch lightning in a bottle again. <laughs> you know, that's usually the way that works. Hey, but, look who's back. It's Gus. Hey, it's Gus, everybody. 
So uh, all got delayed five minutes. Oh, okay. Oh, oh see. Ya. So now they're saying uh, Tennessee's looking for a coach, and actually, the one, like the number one name on their list is Will Muschamp, the Texas defensive coordinator, who is the coach in waiting when Mac Brown steps down. No, wait. Who's looking for this? Tennessee, the Volunteers. Oh shit! So well, if we go from UT to UT, yeah, that's also UT. Maybe yeah. in his contract they didn't write out University of Texas. <laughs> they just wrote UT, and he's like, "Oh, look at that, nice." But uh, that wouldn't shock me. It. Like you know, like everyone's like, "Oh, well, you know, he's the coach in waiting." But Mac Brown's not going to leave for another. I mean, Mac Brown's he's got enough goodwill at UT to last for another decade, I think. Okay, so he was seven and six, but he was in Tennessee. When you said he moved from Oakland to Tennessee, I thought you meant the Titans. No, 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 no. Or, no Raider, so, Raiders. So you mean that is a. What's that? The Raiders, not the Titans. He th- I said when you said he moved from Oakland to Tennessee, I thought you meant the Titans. Keep oh, 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 I thought you meant okay. What do you think I thought? What do you think that you thought I thought? I, you I thought you thought Oakland if you're was, gonna, was the Titans. If you're gonna make make me listen to this fucking <laughs> football coaching conversation, you should at least be able to keep up with it. All right. Yeah, I would say coaching changes are probably the most boring part of football in general. Although something that's cool about uh, university coaches is the bigger schools for football tend to be state schools, like University of Southern California, University of Texas. Mm-hmm. So their contracts are public domain because they're state entities. Right. And so like you can pull up the University of Texas coach is Mac Brown. You can pull up his contract and see all of his paydays, all that stuff. None of it's private information. Yeah, and when you got a pay raise this season, you know, it's printed on the front page of the local newspaper. Yeah, yeah and you can pull it up. I mean, like you get a, get the PDF and you can look at the contract. And there was a weird thing where he got $380,000 on his birthday. Specifically, it was a, that's a hell of a birthday. Okay. Yeah, weird clause. Like, I mean, I guess they had to specify a date, so that was it. Well, they had a bit too. It was uh, whoever won the national championship. I think if Mac Brown would have, or if the the Longhorns would have won the national championship, Mac Brown would have gotten like a five hundred thousand dollars bonus, and I think Nick Saban got like a four hundred fifty thousand dollars bonus. It was, yep. yeah. yeah, yeah, that sounds right. Pretty ridiculous, just for winning one game. You know, that upset me during the game was when Colt McCoy went out. They the announcers kept saying they were keeping him out of the game to save his pro career. And that wasn't, I mean, he couldn't throw. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was a weird thing to stick on the kid, you know, when he's sitting there on the sideline, they're showing him on TV, and the announcers are saying this stuff. Man, that article that you forwarded to me about him in the locker room with his dad was fucking heartbreaking. I don't yeah. know where I got that. Did you send that to me, Jack? That no, r- no, no. Um, that Rivals blog? So, who, did Brandon send that to you? Somebody sent my, me a, a blog on Rivals that described the situation of Colt McCoy in the locker room trying to get back on the field, essentially lying to the coaches. God, that's got to be so fucking frustrating. Yeah. They talked about how, like, he'd thrown the football with his dad a million times in his life, and this is the most important time they'd ever thrown the football together, and he couldn't get the ball to him. And there's, like, six people watching him throw the ball six feet. Couldn't throw the the ball to his dad seven feet away, and it would, like, bounce at his feet, and Colt would be like, give me the ball back, give me the ball back. And then they'd give him the ball, and he'd throw it, hit his dad's feet. His dad would go get the ball and go, give it to me. And they, like, kept doing it, and they were like, Colt, it's over. You know, it's done. You can't throw the ball. So Terrible. It's fucking horrible. Pinch nerve. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so he, he's okay. Or they're saying he's going to be okay for the combine. But did you see what Colt McCoy did with his girlfriend? <laughs> that sounded weird. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Colt McCoy proposed to his girlfriend, really, really hot chick from the stands you've seen in all the shots of his parents. Uh, he proposed to her on the 50-yard line at DKR Memorial Stadium here in Austin at night, and the Jumbotron lit up, or the Godzilla-tron lit up when saying, her name, will you please marry me, Colt. It's it's pretty awesome. There's a photo of the two of them like hugging and what are you like, gay? That, dude, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's so that's, romantic. That's the third largest HD screen in the world, and and, but, and, and her yeah. name was on it, and that that meant so much to her. She's <laughs> like, I always wanted to get married in HD. <laughs> yeah, if he really loved her, why didn't he get the largest? It's fucking three hours north of us. He's got some pull. Go up that's, to Dallas. Is that the largest now? I thought it was it's still bigger ju- than the field. I thought it was still in Japan. I would just be like, don't you have enough football in your life? I mean, really, you got to go out of your way at night to do this stuff, and now yeah, you go she's to a like, football field. This is what I'm marrying. The rest of my life is going to be fucking football. I can't <laughs> even get proposed to without football. If I were her, I would have said no. <laughs> I, I said, listen, I got one word for you. He's, he's a restaurant, wedding. you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not not everything. Yeah, put a, have field. they put, put the a ring, ring in the fucking in, dessert in a football shaped uh, souffle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, hey, babe, run a post pattern. <laughs> he throws her the ring. He's like, no, that's an out, you dumb bitch. <laughs> oh, man. That's be like if Jack proposed to his future wife over Xbox Live. <laughs> In the next room, it's like, honey, put on this headset. <laughs> I have something I want to ask you. It's an Astro Gaming headset. It's the nicest headset in the world. <laughs> it's the third nicest headset available. <laughs> I've missed this. I've missed this. <laughs> we, we, you know, the last couple times you've been on, Jack, we've gotten a little easy on you. You have, actually. You guys done? Y'all done? No, I go no, all no, I, I go further. I didn't even get started on the Achievement Unlocked jokes. 
I'm supposed to work in a pink Xbox controller somehow. So, uh, did you see, Jeff, that Old Republic got pushed to spring 2011? Was is that it, pushed? Is it really pushed? I mean, they yeah, never they, announced well, a date. It was it was expected to launch this year. It was speculated year. that it would launch this year, right? Yeah. But You know what? I, I would say speculation might have been there because they put out a fucking trailer for the game. I mean, call me crazy. Yeah, Once you start seeing game footage or a, a trailer and marketing for the game, you kind of expect to see that within the next 12 months. Yeah. I mean, th- that'll be E3. It'll be... Two years since they put out the trailer before they put the game out. Mm-hmm. And they didn't announce it, I'm sure, long before that. But MMOs are a completely different beast, though, because those things take forever to get ready. Man, I don't care. Take as long as you need. Just make it awesome. Yeah. I can wait a year. Yeah, at this point, it's not like, you know, we're looking for content. Yeah, it's not, it's, not like a, it's not like this is going to be a dry year for games. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. I, I just wonder why they announced stuff like that, too. Is it more that that stuff's always been out there, there just were less people to report on it? Like, why do I know that Marvel has movies scheduled through 2013. Why do, why do I, I know think, that? I think it's the internet. Just all that information is so much more readily available now. I guess so. Hey, can somebody explain to me the relationship between Sony and Marvel and how... why Marvel doesn't own the rights to Spider-Man movies? I think Sony purchased the rights for the Marvel. But uh, they, the can lo- they can lose it. Yes. There was talk about them losing it if they with this fourth movie. It's, it's just a contractual license yeah. agreement, I'm sure. It's yeah. weird. It's like, a, you know, it expires over a certain amount of time, or if you don't produce something in a certain amount of time, it reverts back to the original owner. Hmm. That, that's, that I, I don't know for sure, but that would be my guess. I'm sure they don't have a perpetual license to it. They signed, you know, they probably optioned the property. Sure. And then it was out there for a while, and then they, they used it, and they're just in their licensing agreement, they'll wait for it to expire, and it'll revert back to Marvel at that point. So what we're talking about is uh, Sam Raimi and everyone who's in the first three Spider-Mans are now uh, off of Spider-Man 4. Like, they're not making Spider-Man 4. Oh, man, I was really looking forward to another dance sequence. <laughs> <laughs> what villains would they have had? Supposedly uh, John Malkovich was, was is lining up, or was lined Vulture, up for right? Vulture, yeah. yeah. Howard Stern would make a great Vulture. He would. Is Howard Stern a good actor, though? He's Probably in the was... fucking vulture in Spider Man. I mean, what does he have to be? John Malkovich? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good choice. So John Malkovich is a good choice for the vulture. He's a creepy dude. He's yeah. not old enough though. Not that like he's not that doesn't have that look yet. I don't know. Oh, they got they got uh, makeup and stuff nowadays. But I hear they even use computers sometimes. I don't know, man. You run on a villain, you go long enough. I just saw a weird thing where you remember Superman Four: The Quest for Peace. Yep. No wait, is that right? What's yeah. the one where they made the radiation man? Yeah, that was that was four. that was four. That was four. Where right? they take the, the nuclear yeah. weapons to the sun or whatever. Yeah, three, yeah. three was Richard Pryor. Four was Radiation Man. Did you know that in that movie? I don't know if it was to replace Radiation Man or if it was their first attempt to make Radiation Man, whatever he's called in that movie. They had Bizarro, and they have they had a live action Bizarro, and they shot with it. And there's a battle sequence between Bizarro and Christopher uh, Reeve Superman. I have no memory of that. It wasn't in there. It was cut. Oh, okay. And then they repla- like and they either replaced him with that Radiation Man character, or they just had him earlier in the movie and cut all those scenes out. I was going to say, Millie just watched Superman 4 not too long ago. And I... Yeah, no, no. It was, it was lost to time and suddenly huh. rediscovered. And it was terrible. I bet. It's like Thorium. I mean, I don't know if it was... <laughs> you know, it, was it was lost to time. I don't know if it was, it was terrible in the relative world of Superman 4, but just in general, it was... Fucking horrendous. We'll but, post a link to that. So now Sam Raimi, instead of doing Spider-Man 4, is working on the World of Warcraft movie. You hear about that, Gus? Yeah, they got announced at BlizzCon last year, I I'll think. Sa- I'll say this. Uh, for Sam Raimi and Toby Maguire and all those guys getting fired, they didn't seem to give a fuck. No, I'm sure they got paid plenty to make Spider-Man 3 that they're not concerned about 4. Yeah. Because they, they, were, they, were con- they were contracted for 1 and 2, right? Mm-hmm. And then they all got a huge payday for 4. Dude, yeah. that's the lamest thing I've ever seen in my life. I just life. showed Jeff a picture like of the Edward's, Bizarro. It's like a beefy Edward Scissorhands. Yeah, and he, he's kind of like Frankenstein more than he is like Bizarro. Yeah, That's Bizarro like, is supposed to be like a really big guy, right? He's supposed to be Superman. Yeah, he's he's just a he's Superman. But he was like a, like a big mutated version of Superman, right? No, he's nope. Superman. Really? Yeah, he's just like a he's like a gray. He's got like grayish, like an unhealthy skin, like a thicker jaw, retarded version of Superman. Huh. Well, it's just like it. It we talk about this a lot with comics, and it doesn't matter how far it, how long it takes. Eventually, this happens in every comic book franchise. You have your superhero, right? And then eventually they make the arch villain who is essentially just the superhero, but a bad version of it. Yeah, sure. You know, you have Venom for Spider Man. And then Carnage on top of that, too, because yeah. that wasn't enough. Right. And Carn- then, like, well, like, War Machine is going to be in the next Iron Man. Yeah. And the weird thing is, is that. Spoiler. <laughs> There's a fucking trailer. trailer out. That he turns bad. Oh, he turns bad. 
I mean, I, th- I think he turned bad the comic. Maybe. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry, you didn't read the comic twenty years ago. <laughs> Not exactly a big I, secret. I, I think that's yeah, out of the spoiler. But like, yeah. Green Lantern has the yellow dude, whatever his name is. I mean, it's like, why doesn't the yellow Green Lantern fight Batman? Why does he have to fight Green Lantern? Right. You know, they just they do that in every single comic, like. Even Captain America had that U.S. agent or whatever the fuck that was. U.S. agent. Yeah. yeah. Square shield. Yeah. And he wore black. He was the, the the black uniformed version of Captain America. It's it's really weak. It's, it's always, pretty it's, lame. It's always been weak. Even, well, you know, Wolverine has saber tooth. It's just, it, it's, it's so old. I don't know why people God, put up with it. Comic books are so lame. <laughs> Well, it's, it's such an easy way to be like, oh, you know, these characters, they're on a thin line between good and evil. It's like, this is what you could have been. And it's an easy way to mirror their, like the good guy as a bad guy. It's a cop-out is what it is. Yeah, yeah, basically. That's a, is it a trope? Is that the correct term? It's, I, it's your comic book is 700 issues deep and you've got nothing left to write about. <laughs> pretty much. I'm the, guessing Daredevil probably started as a Batman villain at some point. Kevin Smith's <laughs> writing a Batman book right now, right? Or he's writing a Batman series? I don't know. No. Like Maybe. He, he started doing that Bullseye series. Uh, off I don't know. The the villain from Daredevil and then never finished it. Or I don't think he ever finished it. He could have. I don't know. He, re- he was like two or three. <laughs> <laughs> they put out a trailer for a new Kevin Smith movie called uh, Cop Out. Ugh. Yeah. I heard it was pretty bad. Yeah. It, it looks like a trailer you would see in another movie. You, you know? <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, like an that's SNL, a great description. It's like an SNL digital short of like, <laughs> this This is what something stupid would be. Speaking of trailers, there was a trailer that hit over the weekend that was oh, awesome. Oh, hell yeah. Awesome. What was it? A-Team trailer? Oh, man. Dude, that is uh, horrible, but that last 10 seconds, that, that the 18, funniest thing I've that ever That A-Team seen. trailer, I, I felt stupid watching it. I was like, oh, this is terrible. This isn't going to be good. And then the, like the last 10 seconds, we're like, okay, that was awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the funniest thing ever. I'm very, now I'm going to have to see the movie. We'll, we'll have, we'll have to, uh, to link. Hopefully, I can find it. I think we'll, it, the, it, the one it's we out. saw was Yeah, they put, they put oh, up the official one now. Yeah. It's on Yahoo, I think. So yeah, speaking no of people who have been fired from major franchises, what's up with this Conan O'Brien thing? So, should we just run through the whole thing for people who know what's going people on? People know. I, I it's on the front page of CNN on. every day. Which, do you find that interesting that it's on the front page of CNN? There's, what, 300 million people in America, right? Yeah. Five million people at most watch these shows. I think they get an audience of, like, two or three million people. Yet, whoever's at the helm of this thing and all this is, is front page news that we're all supposed to be interested in. I mean, really, 99% of America does not watch these shows. And that's has true. no and has no interest in them. Yeah, that's a very good and, point. And suddenly, you know, the fact that Conan O'Brien's not going to be get to be the, uh, you know, the host of the Tonight Show is a big deal to everybody. People like a scandal, though. I guess so. Nine, I, I bet ninety nine percent of America didn't watch the Paris Hilton sex tape. But well, it's it's know. definitely uh, it, it's creating this big divide, or like it's it's making a clear divide between the, the people who like Leno and the people who like Conan. And it seems like the like the older. There, so who, there, who who likes Leno? Are there that's, people that's the that are that adamant yeah. about it though? Are there that, like? People that like I honestly, aside from Howard Stern, are there people out there that are like I hate Leno so much. Well, it's, it's, it's more like, like, if you don't like it, don't watch it. It's always more like the the Leno, like he represents sort of that old way of doing things, and like sort of an older generation of people that think you know his horrible jokes are actually it's funny. Just, it's just safe comedy. Yeah, comedy. it's it's super safe comedy. And then Conan's a little edgier. He's a little more in depth with you know what's going on, and he's you know younger. And uh, and so it's basically like this old ideology versus the new ideology, and it's there. And NBC isn't giving Conan the opportunity to sort of find his ground on on his <laughs> in his time slot. I heard he had a pretty funny joke in his monologue that I heard on Stern this morning. They said uh, uh, Conan said that um, you know he's he's all broken up about this whole thing, and he doesn't know if he's going to have to leave or whatnot. And he said it's really weird because I remember being a little kid and watching Johnny Carson and saying to myself, "Someday I want to host the Tonight Show for seven months." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, the, I watched the whole the show last night was was amazing, man. It, they they just they were mercilessly ripping into NBC and the whole situation. Dude, Letterman's been getting in on it too, which is really weird. Did you see what Jimmy Kimmel did last night? No, I heard it was funny though. Oh my! So what Jimmy Kimmel dressed up like Jay Leno with a big old fake chin and the the, the wig, the gray wig and the hairdo. Did his whole show as Jay Leno. The entire show? The entire show with guests, music guests, everything. They do the voice and everything? Yeah. He, he had like a weird lispy kind of voice, though. But, I mean, he did, yeah, he was playing a character the whole time. And it was great. And Chevy Chase walked out with the Conan O'Brien hairdo. He had like a, a wig on with a giant little swoop at the top. Interesting. Huh. It, it was funny. <laughs> it was really funny. It sounds funny. But, yeah. I like Jimmy Kimmel. He's a funny dude. Boy, I'd hate to be lampooned by Chevy Chase. <laughs> how, how stingingly how, relevant. Yeah. <laughs> Although, I guess he is on a network show now. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's on Community. He looks older than my grandfather. 
Yeah. That's why you shouldn't disappear yeah, from the he, limelight for a while and he then disappeared re- for resurface. What, like, like 20 years? I think the last thing I saw him in was probably like Christmas Vacation. Meet the Robertsons was the last thing I saw him in. Meet the Robertsons well, he, or Christmas he, Vacation. He looked like a 40-year-old dude in the 70s when he was on Saturday Night Live. That's yeah, true. You know? But I, I just I, – I don't know why everyone's in such an uproar over it. I mean, the, it goes back to the old thing. If you, if you like Conan so much – Watch the goddamn show, yeah. and then there wouldn't be any controversy. If all Conan's fans watched it, there wouldn't be a problem. And now you get to go on, on Twitter and the internet, which is becoming the champion of failures, basically. <laughs> I, I don't understand Let, that. Let, let's all change our Twitter icons orange in a show of support yeah. for Conan O'Brien. For Coco. I mean, the, the internet seems to have a philosophy now of, we're not just going to root for underdogs. We're going to root for failures. Yeah. We're going to wait till something failures, and then we're going to be like, this is important to us. It's like, no. It wasn't important to you last week. Shut the fuck up. Actually, internet success. Uh, so Chuck came back on the air after like they they basically renewed or they brought it back for a third season, and it was only gonna be like a half season. And the internet was <laughs> so adamant about wanting him back that they've now renewed him for a whole full season. And and their ratings for their their premiere were better than anything from last season. Who is this guy named Internet? <laughs> he sounds powerful. Yeah. But uh, actually, Zachary Levi was on Conan last night. Zachary Levi is Chuck on the TV show Chuck, and he talked all about Xbox Live and video games last night. Really? Yeah, yeah. I actually saw that interview. Also, I thought his his story about playing on Xbox Live for the first time, playing Ghost Recon, and being like taken under the old grizzled veteran's wing was kind of funny. Yeah, was the old grizzled veteran like twelve? No, no, he, <laughs> no he, he commented that when Xbox Live started, you know, it was so few people, and it was like it was a, it, the 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 age skewed a little older. So, like, when you first started playing, it was, like, you know, all, like, gruff-sounding army sergeants were like, oh, I'll come with me, I'll help you, we'll get through this together. And now it's, like, 12-year-olds screaming at him, calling, you know, saying he sucks and teabagging him. <laughs> then, he, then he explained what teabagging was between Conan O'Brien and Tom Brokaw was sitting next to him <laughs> on, on public TV. It was, it was pretty great. You know, that Xbox Live thing, too, about the, the young kids on there, you run into it in Halo. You run into it, no, 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 you run into it whatever the most popular game of the time is. Yes. Yeah. And Modern Warfare 2 has taken all of that away from, from Halo 3. That's, if you have, I was on Halo 3 recently playing, and it's all guys that are either in college or out of college, and they're on there. And it's a lot more fun. You know one thing that's pretty cool? I saw uh, Major Nelson posted the top 20 most played games of the year. Halo 3 is at the top still. Wow. 2, 3, and 4 were all Modern Warfare, or Call of Duty games. But Halo maintained the top spot. Well, you know, I mean... Halo 3 also did get 10 months that Modern Warfare 2 did not. It's true. You know, but Halo, Halo 3 was also, what, a two-year-old game At in 2009? Point, yeah. when, yeah, did Halo, yeah. when, when did Halo 3 come out? It 2007? Was September 07. Man, that is crazy. That is crazy. Yeah, it was a long time ago. And it was the most played game. A two-year-old game. Yeah. Awesome. Where was ODST in the list? Yeah, I think it was number eight. Number eight. I think so, yeah. You, Let, were, you were telling me something about demos were on that list, too, right? Yeah. It was, I, I, one, one thing I thought was weird was Left 4 Dead 2 was not on the list, but the Left 4 Dead 2 demo was. Huh. So There was another demo that made the list, but I don't remember what it was. What do you think that is? You think that's a sign of the economy? I guess so, right? Yeah. I mean, I or a sign that people don't like the game. I don't, I don't, I don't want to ask a leading question there. Do you think maybe it was... End of the year, or, or well, I'm sure a lot of it has to do with the end of the year. But then again, Modern Warfare, yeah, Modern Warfare 2, Warfare 2 came, out. came out at the same time. Was, as it, Left 4 Dead was 2. Assassin's Creed 2 on the list? Assassin's Creed 2, I don't remember. Well, it doesn't have online though. It doesn't matter. Single yeah, player it, games yeah. can get on there. Oh, okay. I guess. Slash dot the other day, and yes, I do read Slash dot. Posted a very cool article that made me happy, and it was about the death of endings in video games, or how there are less and less endings now in video games where. That's the way games started. There was no ending. Yeah. You know, you played Asteroids until you got the high score, and it just got harder and harder and harder. And you were essentially trying to beat yourself. And they said that now, somebody did an analysis. I think it might have been The Guardian in the UK. And they were saying that now that now that games have DLC, the people who develop games don't want to put in endings because they don't want to have a finite chop-off point for the game. Sure. So, and their sequels and everything else. So, well, yeah. like, and good. if you do, you got to come up with creative solutions like Fallout. I mean, that's like Assassin's Creed. Like Assassin's Creed, you play DNA strands in the game, and in the original game that you buy in the store, there are two strands missing. Like you jump from like chapter eleven to chapter fourteen. I don't like that. And it's like obviously that, and then now they've come out and said, "Oh, that'll be the DLC packs." And it's like that's that's I'm all for DLC, so cheap. but that's like yeah, that's weird. Of course, now I'm gonna have to play it too. Because oh yeah, of course. You want me to read this quote here? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, an article in the Guardian asked whether the focus of modern games has shifted away from having a clear cut ending and towards indefinite entertainment instead. With the rise of achievements, frequent content updates, and open ended worlds, it seems like publishers and developers are doing everything they can 
to help this trend. And it just it goes into detail from the actual article here. So I, th- I think it's cool, you know? Yeah, Absolutely. Cool. You and I were talking about the other day, you know, ODST gets a little bit of flack for being a shorter campaign. I like that. I've, yeah. I've determined the length of a campaign for a game should be about five or six hours. I think it's five. I think six, even six feels a little long to me. Like, Jack and I just beat through, we blew through Army of Two Fortieth 40th Day. I think we put about five hours into it. Yeah, five or six. And that was even a little slow because we were, you know, doing videos and doing collections and stuff. And it felt perfect, though. It felt, I beat it, we beat it in two sessions, essentially, and it was great. And the nice thing about it, too, is, like, you take a game like even Modern Warfare 2, which is a fun game, and I'm going back through and I'm playing it on Veteran right now. There's, like, 20 fucking levels in that game. And I didn't, I, like, I played it in November, and then I'm going back right now and playing it again. I don't even remember half of them. But instead of having, like, 15 levels and a, an 8-hour game or a 10-hour game, why not just have six really good levels that are fun to play over and over again. Like, you I mean could, like Left 4 Dead 2? Like Left 4 Dead 2, exactly. Or like Army of Two, 40th Day, which I would be totally happy to go through and play with you, Jack, levels 1 through 7 again, because they were so much fun and they were so well designed. You know? Yeah. And I don't, I don't feel like I got enough out of those levels playing them one time. Now, so how do, you, how do you feel about something like Grand Theft Auto 4? That was... Tol- totally different animal. Okay. But I mean, it's, it's an open no world. Level. Yeah, there's no level. It's a sandbox. But I mean, so, there, are, there are levels you play. I mean, there's, there's story missions you play. I mean... So, I mean, it's not really level-based, but it's the same idea. Like, I, I, I can tell you right now, like, two or three of my favorite level or missions from Grand Theft Auto 4. I don't see how it's comparable. Hmm. I mean, it's not a level-based game, and we're talking about games that have more levels versus less levels. I, I guess so. I love sandbox games. Okay. L- like, if the campaign, if you went through and did all the campaign missions on Grand Theft Auto, and that campaign from beginning to end was only about four or five hours... I think that that would be more than enough. And then you could spend a lot of time in the world doing either side missions or just doing whatever the hell you want. Yeah. Or yeah. playing multiplayer. No, yeah, I, li- sure. I like, I like, I I like that, that idea. I like the way that some games are doing it. And the Saboteur was also another game that did that, where you could do your main storyline missions, but at the same time you could see other missions that were available and go do the side missions. So you could take, you know, the game itself might take, let's say, six hours. But if you wanted to, you could extend that experience to whatever length feels good for you. Case in point, yeah. Gus and I were just talking about Saboteur the other day because he's going back through and playing it. I feel like we played two entirely different games because he was talking about stuff. I don't know what he was talking about. I was talking about missions I played he had never seen, and it was cool. And I feel like if I wanted to go back and play Saboteur, there, I could play through the whole game again and get an entirely different experience just by doing the different side missions that he did Okay, and vice versa. That's awesome. Yep. And that's, but but that's, it's totally optional. That's know? sandbox versus regular traditional yeah. linear gameplay. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm a fan of that. And I, I right. don't think you notice, too, when a game is good, and the ODST, ODST campaign was great, um, I just went through and replayed Bioshock from beginning to end to get that, that last achievement that they added. Brass balls. A- yeah, brass balls. After after I complained about it in a previous podcast. You got it? Yeah. Somebody came and said, well, here's how you do it, and it's not as hard as you think it is. And they were right. And the playthrough on Bioshock, especially if you take out the big daddy battles, which are just basically the same thing over and over you again. You don't have to do those, right? I don't remember. It's been a long time since I've played No, you could, you could avoid them if you wanted to, but it would make it harder to finish, I think, because you get power-ups from that kind of thing. Right. But if you take those out... That is probably a four-hour game. Yeah. Maybe four or five hours. How long did it take you to go back and play through it again? Uh, well, I was playing on the hardest level without being able to, to use, you know, Vita Chambers, which is, you know, I couldn't respawn, essentially. Yeah. I'd say it probably took me about 11 hours altogether. Mm-hmm. You know, just like that. But if you play through on normal and, you know, just like the game was, you know, the way it's intended to be played. Sure. And, yeah, you can blaze through that game very quickly. There's like six levels yeah. in the game, and that's it. I mean, you can get in your little uh, bathy spear, whatever that's called, and you can see all the levels in the game. And that one game of the year, and that didn't have multiplayer, mm-hmm. and nobody, you know, nobody complained about that. So I don't, a, I don't know. P- people were pretty loud complaining about the multiplayer for that game. But I thought I thought it was a stupid argument. I'm saying they were complaining about the length of the game. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, and it, it, as long as the game's cool and it has some replay value to it, I I don't think people should measure games on how long they take to finish. No. Absolutely, I I agree. I think verdict verdict agreed upon. <laughs> That's probably one of the big reasons why we chose Left 4 Dead 2 without realizing it for Game of the Year. Probably. Because it's just it's just a replay game. Just pick up, play, replay, done. Yeah, I think, Jeff, you and I have played through certain parts of Army of Two like probably five or six times. Should we talk about how yesterday, how you totally uh, screwed us over? I'm sorry about so, that. So, the end of the game, there are basically I, three different threads you can take. I'm not going to say what. There's three different endings to uh-huh. this. We just call them A, B, and C. Okay, yeah. so there's A, B, and C. And so, but to get to that point where you can see the endings, you have to fight through this last battle that takes probably about, I would say, 15, 20 minutes of some of the hardest guys in the game fighting them over and over it's again. It's a little dicey, yeah. And uh, and so we had, we had issues just getting to the end the first time, 
And then we finally got there, and it's like we realized, oh, hey, there's other ways we can end it. We got to check out the other way, see if there's anything cool. And so uh, we played again, you know, pr- probably played for another two hours to get to the second ending. And then after that, we took a break, and then we came back. Telephone. That, that's my conference call. Okay. All right. Then after that, we ended up uh, playing some more to get that third ending. And uh, on, so it was basically, it was Jeff's turn to pick the ending. Well, before that, we, we had had some trouble. Like, we got almost to that ending, and the power went out. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that's right. And then the next time we died, and yeah. we, we wiped. And then the next time... So the next time, we make it to the end of the game, and it's Jeff's turn to select the ending, and Jeff picks the wrong, I just, wrong ending. I just hit... <laughs> like, there's a green ending, and a, re- a green button, and a red button. And in video games, you always press the green button. And I just wasn't thinking about it, and so I hit the, I hit the, the wrong ending <laughs> And again. immediately, I was like, what did you do? Why, why have you done that? And, so, uh, and sure was... enough, we, then, it was, then I got angry for you know, 20 minutes or so, and mm-hmm. then we tried again. And uh, got the other ending. So. But I, I cost us an extra 20 minutes, probably. <laughs> I, felt, I felt sincerely bad about that. I was that. sitting there like, wait a minute. This isn't right. And, uh, yeah. You know one thing I don't like about that game? Army of Two, 40th Day? What's that? After I, we beat it that second time, or that last time, I wanted to go through. There's a, it's, there's a lot of cumulative achievements. Like, get 6,666 6, yeah. kills, all that kind of stuff. I went to the, just the start menu, and I wanted to go and s- check my, my progress on some of those achievements, and there's no way to do it. You have yeah. to go into the game to actually do it. That kind of sucks. Which is kind of annoying. Was Army of Two, the first one, very well received? By the way, I almost said Army of One. <laughs> <laughs> was it was the first one well received? I don't know. Okay. I, I think, I think the, uh, the idea of the co-op uh, gameplay aspect was a big deal. The game itself didn't do too hot. Uh, it got kind of ripped apart in ratings, but uh, but yeah, that definitely it was it was a different gameplay mechanic as far as like it's all co op. The whole game is co op, you know, no matter what, you know, is the you and an AI or you and a partner. Kind of kind and, of feels like Gears of War a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and the weapon customization stuff was kind of cool and. What they do with the face mask now, where you can actually design your own face mask. That's actually really, really neat. Somebody on the side had a funny idea. They said that we should have done the Jeff mask. Oh, yeah? Yeah. We should, we should do that. We should say, hey, you know, we should do a contest or something. How yeah. do you do that? Do you do it with, like, an internal paint program? No, no, it's, it's a website. You go to the EA, you get the Army of Two website, and there's actually, okay. like, a mask creator you can use there. And then you can import it from there into the game. They do that with their sports games now, too, where you can put your face on Tiger Woods. Oh, uh, yeah. And they, like they did it for skate, too, for the, the skateboards and the shirts, stuff like that. I saw yesterday somebody made a Captain America mask. That was pretty funny. No. Yeah, that just opened you up to lawsuit. Yeah, I guess. Well, the, there's, user created. there's an approval process. I, I know for a fact there's an approval process. My my buddy was the approval guy on the skate too. Really? Yeah, he would sit there and be like, "Oh, another penis, delete. <laughs> another curse word, delete." Was it an approval process or was it a a screening po- process? A policing. It, it was uh, policing, as in it would go up and then they they take it down. So it's not approval. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes, it was it was a it was a screening process okay, where, that's where it would go up and then he'd go through and be like, nope, sorry, sorry. See, because if you have an approval process, that puts a lot of liability on you. That's true. That also kill. That also kills it. You like, you want to put your mask in Army of Two when you make your when you do your playthrough, and then you have to wait two weeks, an undetermined amount of time yeah. before it gets approved. Yeah. You know, nobody's gonna do that. And always be worse at launch. Yeah. Oh, speaking of which, um, there's a there's a game. An NBA game. I think it's 2K8. Or okay, it's, uh, it's NBA Live 07. Okay, there you go. NBA oh, yeah. Live 07. They have an upcoming thing where there's an achievement associated with being online at the same time as a thousand other people. Yeah. And the game is about to be shut down. The servers are. The servers are. And so the, well, you won't be able to play multiplayer, so basically the same effect, right? Yeah, yeah. This has been attempted a few times in the past. Uh, well, it's been done a few times. It's in been the done, past. and the last time they attempted it didn't work. So really? if, you're, if you're interested in getting that, they're going to try to do it January 31st, the last day they can do it to get everyone online. I'm going to do it. I'm gonna do it. Are you? So, uh, yeah, I have the game, and I'm, it's the only achievement I'm missing from that game. Well, now oh. they only need 999 other people. <laughs> Actually, you can sign in players two, three, and four as guests, and they count. I think. Oh, nice. So every single person can count for four. You can probably organize something like that on your own. There you go. Yeah. So uh, speaking speaking of of large numbers like that, Jeff and I received the uh, Army of Two Forty Day a little bit early um, so to work on some videos and stuff. We didn't release them until the game came out, but. In the like the versus mode, if you go there and look, there's a little box in the upper right corner that says how many people are playing worldwide. And the first day we got it, we popped it on, looked at it, and it said three players are playing worldwide, and two of them were Jeff and I. It was really? kind of well, it was it, kind of interesting. It was kind of like, oh, that's that's pretty sweet. Yeah. And so even only... even even the day before it came out, there were like thirty or forty, but it was kind of cool to see like that one or two days where it was like just us. Could you guys so. get achievements and all that in it too? Yeah. 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 I hate that shit when I see other people playing a game that's not out yet. <laughs> Well, well we, we've now turned that off where you can't tell what we're playing. Yeah, we've, so. we've had to modify our gamer tags. We had to do this for Bayonetta 2. 
uh, yeah. or we would get pre-release games where we're doing achievement videos. See, sometimes we get debug versions in, and then that's a closed-off system. It's part of partner that nobody can see it. Yeah. But when we get retail copies early, or green copies, as I guess yeah. they're called. Green or gold, uh, whatever. We have to change all of our Xbox Live settings to private so no one can see what we're playing and what achievements we're getting. And just see we'll be jackasses. What's you know? that? And just so you're not jackasses. You know? Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I got to say, when, uh, when ODST leaked, I remember seeing a bunch of my friends playing ODST, and it was like... Damn it! <laughs> you know when you say it leaked, what do you mean it leaked? It, it got released, or like I mean, some couple, some, couple targets sold yeah, early. Tar- I mean, yeah, somebody some, broke street date. Yeah, yeah, broke street. Okay, not leaked, or yeah, I guess not leaked. But no, they put out more information about Halo Reach. Did you see? I see that. No, what did they was, say? Uh, they put out more details. There was some. I think it was. I'm like, Game if Informer. Here, Game Informer, right? Game was Informer has an article about it this month. Yeah, and they had uh, specific details about Halo Reach and. Um, you know, some things that put people up in arms who are very big into the canon of Halo. Oh, know? really? Yeah, like, that it, it doesn't follow the Fall of Reach storyline was a big thing. Um, it, it's not about Spartan 2s, it's about Spartan 3s. So, I didn't think... Bitch. I thought, wait, I thought Spartan 3s <laughs> didn't exist at that time or something. Well, that's what a lot of people are saying, that they didn't exist. Which, which kind of begs the question, is that does Bungie have to follow the extended universe storyline if that's accepted as canon? I mean... You know, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, you could apply that lo- that logic to lo- Lucas as well, right? Th- I mean, does Lucas follow extended universe? And, I, and, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who don't consider, say, Fall of Reach, the novel, to be extended universe, but it really is. Yeah. But until the game does it, right? That's the that's the first part. Yeah. But you know, th- but then does does Halo Wars count as extended? Does you know? I think Halo. I think Halo Wars is part of the story, if I remember correctly, because even even in Halo Wars, there was a timeline where you can see how it fits into. The overall timeline of Halo. Well, I would argue that the novel Fall of Reach fit into that timeline as well until somebody made a prequel game that now <laughs> kind of violates that's, the rules of that's it. That's true. But we don't know. I mean, we'll have to see when it comes out. Yeah, you nobody know? knows till the game, till they're playing the game. Yeah. Right? But they said that they've revamped the... Or they, they, they're they not reusing the Halo 3 engine. It's all... I don't know if it's brand new or if it's just tweaked or what, but... I read, I read another comment from an internet poster that said... It looks just like Halo 3, <laughs> which I've heard about every single Halo game when it comes out that it looks just like the last one. If that were the case, Halo 3 would look just like Halo 1. Yeah, or, or Halo Reach would. The trailer go, looks just like Halo 1. Everybody that thinks that, go com- go to Google and compare some screenshots. You'll be wildly surprised. Yeah, or go, even watch even watch the first five seasons of Red vs. Blue vs. Reconstruction. Or... God <laughs> damn. I remember people were making that complaint when, when you and I were making the... Uh, the multiplayer beta video we did yeah. for Halo 3. Halo 3. And we had to cut back and forth. It was the, like, the lobster, the, the, what was it, like, the free shrimp party or whatever that Sarge had? Yeah. And we were cutting between Halo 2 and Halo 3, and I was like, I was like, Halo 2 was a great looking game. I mean, we filmed in it for three years or whatever, and we would cut, we'd be in Halo 3, and then we'd cut back to Halo 2, and I'd go, ooh, oh, <laughs> yeah. this is blurry. And, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. I just recently went through the entire Halo 2 campaign. That is a long campaign. <laughs> wow. I, had, I hadn't played it in, in years. I think that was the only one I played through once. Did you do it? I'm sure you did it on Xbox. You didn't do it on PC, right? And go for the achievements? No, no, yeah. no, no, no. I don't, I don't have the PC. I don't have anything to play it. In fact, I just found out. This is a fucking nightmare. Um, I don't have a PC in my house right now. I have one here that I that I can play like Steam games on, but I don't sure. really have something capable of that at home. And the trailer for LEGO Universe, the LEGO MMO, just came out. And it's going to be PC only. Yeah. I have the same problem. Griffin really wants to play Star Trek Online. And I do too, actually. But I don't have a PC, so I guess I'll get Parallels. We can do Boot Camp, yeah. Yeah. Boot Camp. Not Parallels. Not Parallels. Boot Camp. Yeah, Yeah. I'll Boot Camp it. But I'm going to go find a copy of XP somewhere. (laughs) Boot Camp is a thing on Mac where you can install Windows. And you just reboot. Instead of rebooting into Mac, you reboot into Windows. It works the exact same. I had no problems with it whenever I've had to use it. There's some software that I have for our business that doesn't work on a Mac because it's business software. (laughs) And, uh... (laughs) And, and, but, but there's a thing. I don't understand this. You have to hold down the option key to get it to boot. I've never gotten that on the first try. Is that ever. true? Ever. It's ever. Just, just before that, the, the sound pops up. You have no. to be holding it down. I no. hear you yell all the time. I've never <laughs> had that problem. Like, I have to boot into Windows sometimes at work for uh, soundtrack, what, uh, for audition, Adobe Audition. And I've never had that problem, but you're always screaming about it. I just, I always miss it the first time. I don't know why. I think I figured out why, though. I think it's because I have a wireless keyboard. Oh. And maybe the keyboard's not activated. I could see that, sure. So I, w- I was trying to figure that out. I was just trying to figure that out yesterday. That but totally we actually, makes sense. I actually still have to use a PC, too, because the voice filter that we have for Red versus Blue is one filter that's only available in a certain sound program 
on the PC. That's not on the Mac. Can, can't you just like pay the guys who made that filter to make a you know, soundtrack pro version? <laughs> no, we of made the filter. We, yeah. Oh, you. Made I had the filter. to make the filter back in season one to match the speakerphone that Gus had to be called on in Puerto Rico. <laughs> hey, what's up? I'm Gus. I'm back. Okay, hey, okay, Gus. God, up? you remember we'd call Gus in Puerto Rico when we did that Latin hold music? Oh man, I forgot about that. You recorded some of that, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I did. I have it. Yeah, we, it, my, I think we put it on a DVD on season one DVD, maybe even. Yeah, in the was, outtakes, it was some kind of phone system where we'd hear this. You know, I don't know what kind of music it was, but it was Puerto Rican marimba music, or whatever. <laughs> it was, and then Gus would click hello. <laughs> at the end of it. So uh, yeah, so we have that, and I have to go back and constantly reboot into PC just to filter people's dialogue. It's almost like the kind of like the secret formula for you know. <laughs> I've always heard that they have a, like a cup of grease for McDonald's that they put in everyone's fryer that it comes from the original store. That's not true. That can't I've, be I've true. I've heard that. Is it McDonald's or something else? Yeah, when they start a franchise, they get like a starter cup that they put in. There's a uh, uh, that'd be interesting to look up. They take that shit seriously. Like, there's a restaurant that Gus and I really like in Austin, a hamburger place called Top Notch. If you ever come to Austin, you should love Top Notch. Super old school kind of like they restaurant. Fil- they filmed uh, Days to Confuse there. Yeah, and Varsity Blues was they and seen there. It's fucking terrible. By the it's way. good. It's, it's fantastic. Great. It's good. It's, it's good. good. And uh, like, unfortunately, the uh, the the owner uh, proprietor died. And uh, when did that happen? Uh, it was like, this it was, was like last year. But oh, okay. he had a special, you know, they have a special sauce, and he wouldn't let anybody else know the ingredients of the special sauce, including his family members who were also running the restaurant with him. He would come and work before them every morning and make it. And so when he died, they lost the recipe, and they had to shut the restaurant down until they were able to break yeah. into his safe to get the, the recipe. The restaurant was closed for like two weeks after he died because they were trying to recover the recipe. Wow. They did. They got it. But yeah, it was a whole thing. I, swear, I know the old woman who works there at the front. She's always there every time you go to Top Notch. Yeah. That's great. But that, that's cool. I mean, that's cool that like that's a place that my dad went to with his mom when you know my grandmother when they were when he was a kid, yeah. and it's still around like Dirties by by campus. You know, like that place or has been Nows around forever. Or Sandy's. There's a lot of great places like that. Yeah. Dirties isn't nearly as dirty as it used to be. They renovated, yeah. they renovated like three or four years ago and cleaned that place up. Yeah, but it's still kind of cool. But like, yeah, they, this has been around forever. Or like the old Nighthawk off uh, Burnet and twenty two twenty two. That's now gone. They just they moved it, didn't they? They moved oh. it into the old Kurz location. Yeah, but still, it's gone. You yeah. know. Yeah. Speaking of locations in Austin, I was at home the other day, and I, I just I had the Foursquare app open when I turned on my iPhone, so it then located my position at home. Uh-huh. And you can add your own custom locations to Foursquare if you're not on the map. Some guy added his house, <laughs> so I'm now constantly checking in at his house. <laughs> I'm trying to become the mayor of his house. <laughs> And it's, I hope it freaks him out. That's, That's awesome. When he loses mayorship of his own house. <laughs> That'd be fucking awesome. Bernie B has ousted you as mayor. Yeah. What? Get the fuck out. <laughs> Did you start leave, you, have you started leaving tips for his house yet? Oh, that's like, a great idea. Like, yeah. Quit your dog from fucking barking in the middle of the night. <laughs> no, great. Tuesday like, night is sleep with this guy's wife night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, put the guy's schedule like, yeah, he's out of the house Wednesdays from 8 p.m. to midnight. The back door is usually unlocked. <laughs> kind of thing. That's a great idea. I I may I may get Roaring Fork from you. You eventually. might. You might. I don't. I I don't. I have a pretty uh, weak hold on it actually right now. Did we ever exactly. figure out the actual specific way you can become mayor of something? According to the Foursquare website, you have to have the most check-ins over the past two months, and you have to have an avatar in your profile. Yeah. Okay. I just picked up mayor of Jackalope. You got mayor of Bikinis. I got mayor of Bikinis, which is now radically changed. You guys weren't there yesterday. Uh, they're they're now putting in a wall and basically halving the size of Bikinis, Be- which is it's a restaurant we eat at at lunch quite a bit. I guess we, it wasn't we, making we yeah we eat at Jack a lot. and Joel. <laughs> I guess uh, it wasn't making enough money, so they're opening an Elvis themed bar next door. Yeah, because that's what Austin needs. Yeah, everybody's clamoring for an Elvis themed bar. I hope, they, I hope they have live music there too. Elvis is huge in Austin. Jeff, so. have you ever been to eat at Bikinis when? Joel or Jack wasn't there? Like, no. Have you and I ever gone? Ever? <laughs> no, 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 no. And it's always the same thing. We go outside and people are like, what, what are we going to eat today? And everybody's like, I don't know. And then everybody, like Joel and Jack are just kind of slowly walking towards <laughs> the bikini. And they're like, well, we could go to Daddy's. Or or we could go to Bikini's. Or or you like have that conversation about, hey, where do you want to go for lunch? And you can watch Joel and Jack going, what's the appropriate amount of time that <laughs> Before suggesting we go eat at Bikini's. And you guys go eat there in the dead of winter 
when all the waitresses are wearing parkas. It makes no, no sense. I think that, that was because we were watching football because it's a sports bar. You go and watch some football games there, and it's, you know, if you want to go watch it with friends that don't live near you, might as well go somewhere that has games on. Sure. Right, because like, that's pretty, it's pretty rare in Austin to find a sports bar. Where like, say, well, no, downtown? Like, what, what other sports bars are downtown? Well, like, right next door to that place, there's Daddy's. Daddy's. <laughs> that, <laughs> I will say, though, Daddy's is fucking terrible. It's, it's fucking terrible. It's also slower. Defense. It's also slower, and it's more expensive. And there's not girls in bikinis. <laughs> there, there we go. There, there we go. go. Okay. <laughs> That's the appropriate response. Find a bar on 6th Street that doesn't have a television showing a sports game. I'm going to miss the cold weather now that it's going away from us. Are you going to miss it? I am. No. I like is it weather. done? I mean, yeah. is it really? Yeah, I'm sure. It's, it was always South by Southwest was sort of the, the threshold of when I would say winter ends and sort of our, our summer begins. God, I can't wait for South by Southwest. Dude, Kick Ass is the opening film. Did you see I that? I saw that. Yeah. I kind of, I, I think I have to buy a film badge just to go see Kick Ass again. I'm no, so excited for really that. No, you really don't. A film badge is like 400 bucks. Uh, but to see that movie again, I'm, I'm that or excited. Just, as or just, to wait, what the fuck what? are you saying? It's no, not no, like no, no, it's no. the only opportunity no. you're ever going to have to see the fucking movie and again. You've already it's seen not the going movie. back in the vault. You've seen the movie and the movie's coming out eventually. It's not that good that I want to see it again. $400. I'll pay $400 and I'll get the movie for you. I'll go see other stuff too, but I'm saying that is a big factor as I want to see it again. Or wait two months and see it for fucking five dollars at a matinee, you idiot. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You could see it. Imagine how many times you could see it for four hundred dollars after it comes out. You could probably, you could probably see, see it when 40 it matters. Times. I, was on the, the I was on the fence about buying a South by Southwest <laughs> film badge this year, and that being the opening film has pretty much pushed me over the edge. I want to see that movie. Just get a fucking press badge. Which you've already seen. I can't you can't buy a press badge. Or you can't get a press badge. Personally, Jeff I, or Jack, I admire your enthusiasm. Thank you. So <laughs> I gotta have one nice compliment. Yeah, paying four hundred dollars to see one movie, is dude. For four hundred dollars, I'll give you a pre-screening of the new RVB season. Nobody <laughs> else in the world will have seen it. Four hundred dollars gets you into every film during South by Southwest, including all the parties where there's what, free what, alcohol. What, what other movies do you want to see? I don't know yet. I haven't looked at the schedule. For four hundred bucks, we'll, get, we'll download stuff. the script and we'll act it out for you. There you go. <laughs> like over a three-part series over lunch. Oh, only if <laughs> only if uh, Gus gets to be Hit Girl. God damn it. Four hundred dollars. See what you're trying to do, which is your mistake. Is I, if I were you, I would never see the movie again, because you saw it with a good audience, and that colored your impression in a positive way of the movie. And I think you think you're going to be able to recreate that, and you're not going to be able to. I, I think the opening night screening of that movie at South by Southwest will be very, very similar to what we saw at Beat at. It's going to be a group of people that absolutely want to see that movie live and are going to have a great time. You, you, it probably won't have that temp soundtrack that you really love. Though, no, really. no, that's we did. We did see the Beanat cut of it, which had like Superman music and Batman music stuff that won't make the final cut. But there's a lot of stuff that was in there that was permanent. That you know, I, I, it's going to be interesting to see how they get around that. You also it, saw four hundred dollars. Interesting, apparently. The South by Southwest audience is so different than the Button Amathon. That's audience. true. It really is. Yes, but it's not as bad as what you would think. There are people who pay four hundred bucks for a film badge. If, they are a different if, audience. If you're gonna say it's if if you preface this four hundred dollar badge by saying it's not as bad, four hundred dollars shouldn't include the words as bad at any point. Well, it's, 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 I mean, it's not going to be as good as as Buttonumathon. Nothing's going to be as good as Buttonumathon. There you go. I, I mean, I'll admit that absolutely. Like there, there will there will never be a better Rocky screening than the one we saw at the Draft House for Beanath. That was awesome. Which was awesome. But it, you know, that's if you, what I'm telling you. I'm well, I'm not arguing that. Don't try to redo it. You're gonna. You, what he's saying is you're gonna pay four hundred dollars to be disappointed. I'm Don't. gonna pay four hundred dollars for a film badge that will last me nine days that I get to see a lot of movies and go drink a lot of alcohol. For I free. got news for you. I need you to work overtime most of the days. <laughs> you're trying. You're, to, you're trying to catch lightning in the bottle again, and you're gonna be disappointed. And you're always gonna take other people to the movie. And you tell them how awesome it is, and then they're going to see it, and they're going to be like, yeah, that was pretty good. And you'll be like, oh, what? Have you, seen the, the girl, like, have you seen the Hit Girl trailer? Come on. That movie's going to be awesome. Yeah, that movie okay. is awesome. I'm not saying the movie's not awesome. I'm saying y what it is in your head is you're not going to be able to match that. I thought it was pretty awesome when I saw it the first time, and it was called The Professional. Oh, snap. What about that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> that uh, you're talking about not being able to recreate the moment, and, and you're showing something, and people not appreciating it, makes me think of the... Uh, what was it? The, the film festival with the zombie with an X? Oh, you know what it makes me think about? is there's, There is that thing that when you show someone a video that you really like, 
and then you're two minutes into a five minute video and you realize no one that you're showing it to likes it. Like when Gus showed us that fucking Japanese video. That's what I was thinking about. <laughs> what, Rocket Share? Rocket Share is the best. Gus, Gus like, showed us the funniest video on the internet and it wasn't that funny. Like I remember thinking, I now like Gus. I, I'm second <laughs> guessing our friendship because of this video. <laughs> oh, please. It was, it's awesome. But Gus was talking about a film festival that we went to, which was actually the one that we made real life versus the internet for. That was right. a gr- we, great video. What was it called? The uh, you, you, I know you, you talk about calling it... Was it the Wild Wild it Web? It was called that the was Wild the... Wild Web. And it was an interesting idea. It was like an internet browsing session, but in a movie theater. And they had a connection up. It was at the Lincoln Center in New York. And people would call out things that they wanted to see. And they would look them up online. And they would show them. So we'd watch people's call outs, like requests, two minutes at a time, three minutes at a time. And we had like the G.I. Joe, PSAs. That kind of thing. You're talking about that guy, aren't you? Yeah, and, and then we went through, and we got to think, and then one guy called out a, a Flash cartoon called Zombie, X, X Zombie. It was, right? yeah, it was on Newgrounds or something, I think. And he was like, yeah, yeah, he can't keep, show this, show Zombie, show Zombie. He was like really excited about it, and it was about a five-minute Flash cartoon, and a couple jokes went by, and it just wasn't hitting with the audience. Um, it was really well animated, but it was just like, the audience was n- clearly not responding to this, the whole theater full. The kid panicked. The kid, I mean, the kid absolutely lost it. And he was like, turn it off. Just turn it off. It's okay. <laughs> no, never mind. Just turn it off. It's no good. And I remember that. I felt so bad for that kid. It was the first time I've ever seen someone in the audience bomb. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to link dump it. I, I pull it up. I'm watching it right here. He, he was really. Yeah, I mean, he freaked out. The Draft House used to do something similar to that. It was like bring your own tape night. It was like you, you bring in a VHS tape and then they would have like best of night and stuff. Well, they have those uh, those like found movie nights. Is that yeah. what you're talking about? Yeah. That's, I think Where that's you, it, it has to be a VHS tape you found somewhere like at a garage yeah. sale or whatever. Yeah. Well, th- there's there's that's based off found magazine, right? I don't know if it is or not. Which, you know what Found Magazine is? I do know what Found okay. Magazine is. Uh, Found Magazine, for those who don't know what it is, is a guy, uh, basically he finds papers and collects stuff off the ground and then makes a magazine of it. I, I don't, I've never really read it, but I've heard it's I read cool. it because there was a like a Seth Rogen issue. Oh, really? That one, yeah. Oh, that's cool. And it wasn't as good as I'd wanted it to be. <laughs> So he just went around finding articles about Seth Rogen on the floor? Like, and <laughs> no, it was it like a, a Seth, Rogen, Seth Rogen had like a, a feature he did on some shit that he found growing up. And it just, it wasn't very funny. I was, a little, I was disappointed. Hmm. I expected more. Out of Seth Rogen? We all expect more. <laughs> Speaking of found footage, I watched, I, I sat down in Gus's chair and I'm making segue after segue here. Um, <laughs> See, it just it, flows. It's the chair. The I, I watched Paranormal Activity just because I was curious about it, and it's finally out on DVD. Oh, yeah. And I, I made the comment before that it seemed like somebody just saw the cycle that, oh, it's been about 10 years since Blair Witch. Let's make a movie and market it in basically the same way they did Blair Witch. I, I didn't realize how on the nose that comment was until I saw the movie. That movie's just like Blair Witch. Really? Yeah. It's a movie about found footage where there was a an incident that happens. They find this footage. And it's footage from the police department. They recreate what happens to these people oh. through their footage. Oh, and I know that. It's a lot of walking around in this house. It's like Blair Witch in a house where they, they talk to this woman and she talks directly into the camera. And then they just have these incidents. Is it scary? Yeah, man. It's like that creepy kind of scary. Like when you're looking down a long hallway to, to a door in the middle of the night kind of a thing. You know? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's cool. I, I don't that. like that kind of scary. That messes my head. No, plausible scary? Yeah. yeah believable yeah. scary? It's definitely like a first date good movie, you know, where people are, stuff's jumping out all the time. Not nice. like Drag Me to Hell, which was fucking awesome. Drag me to no, hell. I'm glad you finally saw it. Awesome. Great film. I don't know how I missed it. Was that 2009? Because I would have said that would have been one of the better movies of 2009. Was it 2009? I think it was. Yeah. yeah. It was that was like actually, January, that, February. That was a South by premiere at two, in 2009. Joel did not, he did not get it. Didn't all. get Drag Me to Hell? Nope. He did not get did it. Did he watch the whole thing or just that scene? Just that one scene that you and uh, I watched, but he was. Which scene are you talking about? The the homage scene to Evil Dead 2. The the scene at the seance. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is okay. nothing but Evil Dead 2 homages. God, that movie's so good. So much fun to watch. Yeah. Well, if you're a Sam Raimi fan, who. Spider-Man, yeah. you know. But if you liked Evil Dead, I mean, it's. It's like the movie he should have made after he made the Evil Dead movie. Absolutely, right? yeah. Because yeah. that's well, what you would expect. It's like but, a higher production Evil Dead. But it's like you, you watch that movie. If you had no idea who directed that movie and you watched it, you'd either be like, that's a Sam Raimi movie or that's someone desperately trying to be Sam Raimi. Yeah. Like, it's, it's so spot and doing on. A, and doing a great job. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I yeah. love that movie. Everybody should see Driving to Hell. Did, did you pay $400 to see that movie, Jack? I did. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I bought a badge to go to South by that year, so technically, yes, asshole. Did you pay $400 for your badge that year? Uh, I think it was like three seventy five. I'm in. I'm in. A, I'm on a panel for South by Southwest th- this coming uh, for the interactive. That's oh, gotta so, be like four so years get, in a row for you. So you get a free badge. 
I, I do get a free badge, but I think I get a... Uh, you get an interactive badge, or do you get a gold badge? I think I get a gold badge. Nice. I'll take and it. that's one that you can go to anything? No, no, that's film and interactive. Like it's, the okay. plat- platinum is the everything badge. Well, Jack, Jack, can I tell you something? Yes. I would never set foot in a live music show in I my life. I 100% agree with you. Anyway, wait, any in your life? I, I, or during South By? I don't like live music. Really? It's a weird thing to say, I know, because there's so much live music in Austin, but it's beat the interest in live music out of me, be living huh. in the city. I, I think of live music when I go see someone perform live. It's like, wow, this is a mediocre version of the song I like on the radio. And I, I just like recordings. I'm, I'm weird that way, and I realize that, but I, I just don't go to live shows. You want to hear the polished, like, finished version? I want to hear the song. Yeah, I want to hear the song. And I also don't want to suffer through all the other songs that I don't like and don't listen to in my car to get to the one song. Okay. Like, I don't want to pay $400. No, that's that's understandable. But for yeah. the one track. You no, know? like the Platinum Badge, though, at South by is like $700. Something I think ridiculous. it's more than that. I think is it? It's like eleven. Yeah, I, I, I think it's over 1000 yeah. Jesus. It also makes me feel gay. <laughs> it what? does. I, I want to talk about that. <laughs> it makes me feel gay to go to a live show. And like, because usually bands are all guys. What if it's a hot chick? And you're, well, I mean, I, yeah. Who? Avril Lavigne? Say Ferris. I went to, sure, a, t- I I went to a Tiffany concert. Cheryl Crow? Oh, it's not yeah, like, like Cheryl a, Crow? Britney yeah. Spears, lady. It's not yeah, like a shortage absolutely. of hot chick. Gwen I, Stefani. I would watch that Pompla Moose chick in, in yeah, concert, there probably. But like, if I'm like on a, going to a band that I like and I'm just sitting there like staring at them all night, I just feel a little awkward. I yeah. do. It's not it's not a comfortable feeling for but me. But see, I saw Metallica last year at South by Southwest. They had a secret Activision uh, show when they were they had just announced the Metallica Guitar Hero or whatever. That was probably one of the best concerts I've ever been to in my life. Cuz it was like everyone there loved the music and they literally it was like a greatest hits compilation of Metallica. Like they played everything you wanted to hear. Hey, by the way, there's tickets on your desk. What's that for? That's for Jonathan Colton, actually. Oh, yeah, cool. he's playing at Antone's next month. The, so. the platinum badge, the walk up rate, by the way, is twelve twenty five. Yeah, twelve hundred dollars and twenty five dollars. <laughs> yes, twelve hundred dollars <laughs> and twenty five dollars. The uh, yeah, like when we go to packs and stuff, I never go to the music nah. shows or anything like that. I like Jonathan Colton and I like his songs. I like uh, you know everything he's got on iTunes. I just wouldn't, I wouldn't go to a live show. I disagree with you on that. Like, I would pref- I prefer live music, but I went to so many shows as a kid growing up that I don't think I've been to one in four or five years. I don't think I'll ever see another live act again. I just yeah. got burned out. But the kind of music I listen to is a little different. It's all, like, obnoxious kids running into each other and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I, I hate but, to say it, but I agree with Bernie. I, if I could never see another live music show the rest of my life, I would die a happy man. But every, time you, saw, is- every time you saw Dismemberment playing, you had a good experience, right? It was worth it. Yeah, that's true. I, I will say, living in Austin, I'm... I get really tired of the live music scene here because it's like every bar in Austin has a stage. And every time it's like if, if you go out Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, you're going to go to a bar and there's going to be a crappy band playing That's way too you, loud. You go to places that have cover bands like we go to different bars. I, no, I no. never, ever, ever go to a bar that has a band playing. Hey, speaking I'm not saying there's no bars that have, you know, not. I, I'm just saying that's playing. the scene that you subject yourself to. Well, anywhere else. If you go to Shakespeare's, not anyone's. Uh, go, have you ever seen a band play Casino or Jackalope? I stay away from bars that have live music. Actually, I have seen a band play Jackalope. I right. don't go to a bar to listen to. I go to a bar to talk to people. Yeah, yeah, not yeah exactly. me too. Not to have trouble. So I don't go to the kind of bars that would have music that would make it hard for you to do that. Okay, but I'm saying the majority of bars on 6th Street are going to have live bands. I think what Jack is saying, he doesn't like bars with live music, and you're saying you don't go to bars with live music. Yeah, he's that saying that like he can't... Point. Y'all they, are agreeing. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I'm not saying all of the bars do, but I'm saying the majority of the bars on 6th Street have live music, right? Yes. You can't sure. argue that point. Okay, thank uh, you. I mean, it's very you could throw a rock and hit one easily, for sure. Yes. Hey, Jeff, did you know a new Clips album came out last month? No, it didn't. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I'm looking is at it right good? here on iTunes. Oh, I have no idea. We hey, get Jeff, that. do you know that you dyed your hair? Yeah. Oh, I didn't. My wife did. No, that's not... Okay. She asked me... It's your hair, She so. asked me if she could dye my hair, and I said, yeah, I don't care, sure. Were you dyeing all the gray out using some Grecian formula? I do have some gray, but I wasn't, no. <laughs> I've had gray hair since I was, like, 14. Hmm. Really? We knew a dude that we worked with who went gray, completely gray, like, 24. Ouch. Oh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, Steve Martin. Yeah. I uh, I got hit... I got a uh, concussion. I got hit in the eye with a baseball when I was, like, 14, Ooh. and when I woke up, I had gray hair. No shit. Not, I've had it ever since. Yeah. Knock the pigment out of your hair. Yeah. Well, they say that they say that trauma can do that. Yeah. Jason Jeff, has Jason Jeff being has like forced a, to play baseball. <laughs> Jason has that little patch of gray on the back of his head. Or is that gray or is that like it's a like blonde? A, it's like it's a like blonde weird, almost. Yeah. It's really weird. Speaking yeah. of trauma, Gus had something on his laptop for the past hour. I think he's been trying to get to. No, no, it's cool. The dude, don't don't fucking make segues I'm for me. I'm trying to help you, man. I got, I got you my, look like Gus you were anxious to talk about it. No, I got, it was just the first tab open. I've got like 20 tabs open of potential topics, and as we steer the conversation, I pick one that's relevant. So I said, you, you so like brought Gus up do what trauma. Gus does. Okay, fine. Whatever. Don't, don't, don't fucking control my style. 
I, right. I could ruin your story right now for everybody. I feel obligated to uh, <laughs> to have our fringe science portion of the podcast, though. Did you read that the one of the explanations for why the UK is completely frozen right now? What's that? This is this kind of ties some things together. You have should, you, have you, you guys seen that the picture? satellite yeah. image? Is yeah. fucking terrible. You should link up that satellite image. That's that's scary. We yeah. saw a satellite image of the UK from last week where it looks like a picture of the North Pole. It's just the what uh, Gavin will get on me about this, but it's the island of Britain of Great Britain. Great Britain, not Ireland, but the island of Great, Great Britain. Great Britain is the island, and it's solid white. Yeah, there's nothing green on the entire it, island. It's like something out of the day after tomorrow. Is it? No, it, it is. That's exactly what it looks like. Isn't North England sinking too, or like getting slowly flooded? Let's hope so. Yeah. Well, now it's ice. <laughs> now it's ice, and so it's like yeah. it'll float. Yeah, so it'll, it'll be problem fine. solved. But they're saying it's because you know you don't think about it. The UK's way the hell up north. Yep. But it doesn't have you know Iceland or Sweden temperatures because it gets some kind of Gulf Stream or whatever the hell that is yeah. that goes through there and makes them a little bit more temperate. And they're just not getting it now. And it's they're they're frozen. They're solid frozen. Ben, I read recently said there was ten straight days of snow there, which they've never had in his entire lifetime. Yeah, yeah. So, it's like so for like ten years, ten or eleven years. <laughs> yeah, right. But um, this is great. This is from the Pakistan Daily, and the reason for the cold temperatures is because of the time hole leak. And leaks in quote, not time hole, but, <laughs> but uh, leak. And the time hole leak over uh, Norway is what's causing the temperatures because they punched through the troposphere. The U.S. did because we were running experiments and we shot a high energy quantum beam into the atmosphere and poked a hole straight through the troposphere, which brought down cold temperatures, which I think is the plot of the day after tomorrow. Because the, <laughs> the cold temperatures from the atmosphere comes down through like some kind of funnel, and they're using as evidence the spiral pictures from <laughs> Norway for that we that we had like two weeks ago. I completely believe that. So, to the west, firing of this quantum high energy beam we had previously reported on our December tenth report re- titled "Attack on God's Heaven Lights Up Norwegian <laughs> Sky." To how catastrophic for our planet this massive thermal inversion has been. Uh, Anthony Noonan, an assistant general manager for risk management at Mitsubishi Corporation in Tokyo, is reporting today that the entire northern hemisphere is in winter chaos, with the great danger uh, from this unprecedented global event being the destruction of billions of dollars worth of crops in a world already nearing the end of its ability to feed. Okay, I heard, okay, I, normally, I heard it's a conspiracy. I, I know like, a couple weeks ago I gave you shit about not sending me links because I could find them anyway. I could never find that. What the fuck is that? Pakistan Daily? Is that, is that, is I that don't from, even know how to find that. <laughs> it's daily.pk. <laughs> is that from Infowars.com? Please, yeah. send, please send me that one. I'll I never be able that. to find that one. Sarah Palin actually fired the missile. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Sarah, disproved global warming. Yeah, there's, there's the, Sarah Palin's on. She's a Fox commentator News. on Fox News now. Yeah, good for her. High energy beam fired into the upper heavens from the United States High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. What's that an acronym? Dude, that's for? so many. Harp. That's Harp. so many. Nice. So many big words. I totally believe it. <laughs> it, it. It has resulted in a catastrophic puncturing of our planet's thermosphere, thus allowing into the troposphere an quote unimpeded thermal inversion. Was so, this well, on the exosphere? No, I, I'm no scientist, but I have a question here. Wouldn't the space shuttle launching do the same thing? Aren't we puncturing the troposphere and the thermosphere? Is that what they call it? Gus, that's not a high energy quantum beam. Oh, okay, beam, okay, okay. <laughs> this is a high energy quantum beam. I guess beam. That when it's a high energy quantum beam, it creates the hole. Whereas the space shuttle. Was this article written by exactly like an eighth right. grade boy? <laughs> well, it punctures the air in a way that the air won't reseal itself. Right. Duh. Duh. Right, right. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> wow. God, oh is it only going to get worse or will it eventually. It yeah, does, heal is the hole going to heal itself? Uh, let me see if I can see what the, can, can the we, prognosis okay. is. Can we fire another missile with a giant band-aid on the end? <laughs> oh, no, no, and, no. Like, no. plug up the hole? Just fire the same missile in the other direction, right? In yeah. reverse? You, would uh, you like to hear their analysis of what's going to happen? Yeah, sure. please. To the long-term consequences of this thermal inversion caused by the West, these reports further warn that by the puncturing of our atmosphere, by the HARP radars, our planet has also been, quote, needlessly exposed to the growing threat posed to us by the giant mysterious object currently approaching us which we had previously reported on in our January 3rd report titled Russia Prepares for Asteroid Strike as New Comet Near Sun, <laughs> Sun <laughs> which has been blamed for the rapid shifting of our Earth's North Pole that was first documented in 2005. There's a lot of information in this article. If the wow. Silver Surfer shows up, I'm going to be freaking out. So why he'll save us? No, because the Silver Surfer is the bringer of doom, right? He's he brings Herald of Galactus. Herald of Galactus. But he's and also, it sounds like Galactus is on his way. I love this podcast because sometimes even I feel like I'm not the nerdiest person in the, in the room. <laughs> Man alive. 
So, okay, so... So we're, we're fucked. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> egg on our face if this turns out to be true. Yeah. And we have punctured the troposphere. So if we, it we, doesn't we, turn out to be true, then Mitsubishi's run by idiots? We need to rely on the Russian Bruce Willis to stop a comet from uh, hitting the Earth. <laughs> They're going to go up through a hole in the troposphere. It'd be awesome if you could poke a hole in the atmosphere. That'd be great. Like, you could po- poke a permanent hole. Like, all the oxygen, like, spews it, it, out. It makes me think of space balls. Yeah, I was, I was when they open the hatch and they, like, oh, yeah. put the vacuum onto the atmospheres to suck all the oxygen out. Oh, She's okay. gone from suck to blow. Yep. All right. So I'm sending you this uh, link, Gus, because you will never be able to. Thank you. This. Thank you. I also sent you the slash dot link about the ending of games now coming to an end. How ironic is that? Speaking of things coming to an end, should we start wrapping things up here? Okay. I think so. Why not? It's been a good one. It's been Please a good run. Please send your PayPal donations for Jack's South by Southwest badge, or should I say his kick-ass Filled. ticket. Yes, my kick-ass <laughs> ticket. To Jack at PayPal.com. That's not a real address, but that's not. <laughs> yeah, please don't send anything. It probably there. is a real address. Sadly. Yeah, don't send anything don't. there. It's not me. Okay, well, thanks for listening, everyone. Bye. Ta ta.